Hi, I'm Anna. And I'm Ben. And we are Autosave. Welcome to our channel. Today we're watching Kaguya-sama Love is War, Season 2, Episode 11. I, I'm i feeling a lot of things. I'm worried. I'm anxious. I I feel like I'm about, like, I feel like I've seen a title of a video that's like, your heart's going to break watching this, and then I'm about to hit play. Which I think is very valid to feel because of the last, one of the last shots we saw in the last episode, episode 10, uh, we have the girl that we can only assume based on her hair is the one that led to Ishigami being hated. Uh, the girl that he supposedly was stalking. Yeah. And we see her at the end at a sports festival. We also see Ishigami smiling. That's Ishigami's happy. Miko's cheering him on. Ish. Ish. <laughs> Just by her presence. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I we got some really awesome, uh, I guess, development. I get information about Ishigami and Miko's relationship with each other last episode and how they're both looking out for each other's best interests just out of principle. In and private. In the shadows. Yeah, and in their own ways. And like it, it was just really nice to see both of them and how they, I guess, act upon each other. Right? Right. Um, I don't know. I'm, it, it was a great episode. Last episode, I could talk about this, the one and only Daichi Fujiwara and his exploding presence on screen. But there was a lot of good things that happened last episode. A lot of development from Kaguya. Um, Yuki's father. Yeah. It was great. Okay. Great last episode. I ended up ended up happy and anxious. I hope that I'm not I'm I'm hope that I'm happy at the end of this episode. I just yeah, I I don't know. Um Onidara is the one that we're a, a little bit suspicious of at the moment. Cause we know now that the rest of the tribe of Ye uh seems to have a positivity towards yeah. Ishigami seems to have a care for him and sees that he isn't treating this as a joke and he's genuinely trying. And she's the only one that I am suspicious of at the moment, whether she's acting alone or with some other people in a plan. I, I see that there might be something coming up that we are going to be very upset about. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be happy. We're going to, um, our positivity and uh we're going to change the show that has been out yes. for a while. We're going to rewrite it just with our positivity and It's going to be happy. We're going to yep. be happy. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, oh no. Oh, everyone's doing it. He's not gonna want to. Why did I? My emotions are going like this. I know. I can't tell if she was trying to just bring him down or like there was something genuine there. I don't. <laughs> Just pretend Kaguya is chasing you with a knife. Why? 
カップルを見れば無条件で呪う僕にしては珍しく幸せを願っていた大丈夫だって He caught him doing something shady. 君君いたの当時の僕は過剰なまでの正義感を抱え不条理がとにかく許せなかったじゃたのならもう少し話はシンプルだったのだろう何だと思っているんだそこからはよく覚えていない。He threw the first punch. とりあえずこいつを女が許すかない顔にしてやろうと思ったことだ。ここで手を引くなら、キョが何もしないでやる。いくら殴られても、僕は彼女と別れたりしない。暴力じゃ愛は勝ち取れないんだ。石神君。モギノ君かわいそう。ストーカーじゃん。死ねばいいのにないないこれはないキモい何なのお前おかしいのはあなたよ<笑>確かに僕はおかしかった A little strength the language of flowers そうおかしいのは僕だ映画期間が明けても僕は反省分だけが書けず許すそうですか。ピノが切れて、オートモーナウローが、リベンジポルノカマソウが僕には関係ない。一刻も早く解放されたい。書いてやる。He recorded her without her permission, didn't he? It's the eraser. 結局、僕は何も書けなかった。案外、しがみとかマジサガル。僕、赤組だっけ白組だっけどこどこにいたらはいいてこい周りの視線など気にするなそしてある日突然その人は来た。教会への加害を防ぐために、お前は何の反論も行わなかった。いや、俺たちが導き出した結論だ。これ本当ですか？やはり見立てに間違いはなさそうだ。そりゃ反省分だけ出さず何ヶ月も自分から定額しているようなや
Look at how happy he is! Oh my god! Poor Kage on the losing team. To think that they were thinking about him so much before they even met him! Back to the discussion. Okay, that was Kaguya-san, A Love is War, Season 2, Episode 11. It's a good day to be in the Yu Ishigami fan group, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> so as the president of the Ishigami fan club, do you have any uh, first statements in this discussion? No, nothing, <laughs> nothing can do it. Uh, I'm emotional. <laughs> I'm really emotional, and it's not like um, it's not like a one-dimensional. Like I'm not sad. I'm not like happy. I'm not like uh, angry or frustrated. I'm like a mix of all of those. Mm -hmm. And it's fucking anime. I feel so much for like an anime. And so, it, um, I don't know, man. It's like I. It's gonna be hard to put into words, but he. The decision to not have the girl, I think her name's Kyoko, not ever be told the truth of the matter is a very complex and good, it, it's good that it happened that way. And I didn't expect it to. And the, and the fact that it happened the way it did I think makes the story and the character like that much more enriching. And I think that it's what Kaguya said. Like that's the smile he mm -hmm. bought to protect. And like, there was a part of me though, at the end that really wanted someone to just tell her, you know, but it was like a bad part of me. It wasn't like you're, a positive, right. nice emotion of mine. I was like, someone needs to freaking tell her and wipe that smile off her face. You're right. And then like that just defeats the purpose of Ishigami protecting her this it, whole time. It would have defeated the purpose of. At of that point, he should have just said it then on that day when he was beating him up. It. Yeah, I, I think that it was. Um, I think it's just like I think this the mangaka having Kyoko not learn the truth was the same as Ishigami not winning his race. Mm -hmm. And I think that both things bred a better outcome than if either of them had happened. Mm -hmm. I think that it's better for Ishigami that he did not win that race mm -hmm. because of what came afterwards. Any positivity could be read as superficial and easy and just oh i did good so people are happy with me rather than what happened of him losing there being potential to be unhappy with him and seeing what happened then i think i might have been overly emotional for this episode based on like life experience reasons and I, I think something really got to me in terms of like the imagery of Ishigami like locked in his room and not going to school like that happened to me like I stopped going to school because of people that were there and and things they were saying about me or interactions I was having with them and I stopped going and I did my work from home and every day that my parents would be like are you going to tell the counselors what's happening are you going to tell them the truth are you going to tell them who's doing this every day I didn't I just did my work from home and I just didn't tell anyone who was making me not want to go to school and I feel like I want to cry right now because I never talk about that and I never talk about it from that point, from that, uh, like, I, I'm open about the fact that I, 
I stopped going to school for a little bit because of of specific people and but I never really talk about it in terms of like how that made me feel and why I never like said who who it was or what was happening and just seeing a depiction of someone like locked in their own room in the dark like protecting people like I think back about it and I'm like obviously I'm like 26 now I'm like very far removed from high school but it felt so serious then it felt so like I could I could make someone else unhappy or ruin their life I should just take the brunt and burden of it myself and now I look back and I'm like, it was so petty and stupid. None of it was life or death. None of it was like serious. But if everything, when you're younger, everything feels humongous. It's very easy to diminish your feelings by looking at it in a perspective from now. Because when you were in that position, it was your life. It wasn't a stupid, petty thing that was real. And it was your life, and this was his life, and it does. It's e- it's it's really easy to look back and be like, "Oh, like I have perspective. This was insignificant. It's just high school." No, it, it it's a legitimate feeling, and it has had an impact in who you are as a person, and ha- and just how you think about it now. And I think that it's awesome that you brought up your experience with that because I think it lends itself to how rich and real the story of this anime is. Like, I can't relate to Kaguya in terms of her emotional uh, trauma and her family issues. Like, I can't relate to her as a character with that. I I can't relate to Miyuki um, and his family life. Uh, I can't relate to Chica either. Um, Ishigami, though. Yeah. He's a real one. A character, and, and Miko, too. A character who, characters that uh, people talk about behind their backs or or bully or um, change narratives uh because they're intimidated by that person or they're upset with that person they manipulate people's perceptions of that person behind that person's back like those two characters and the way that other people do things to them is hard for me to watch i that makes sense i think that it says something about how selfless both of those characters seem to be. Um, I think that it might be easy to argue for some people that it's lack of self-confidence and not an unwillingness to stand up for yourself. And I think that that isn't what is there. I think it is a person deciding that other people they they don't want to disrupt other people's lives with their own emotions. And I think that's real and understandable, especially when you're alone and you're in high school. When you are being ostracized and isolated as an individual and you don't have any anybody to begin with, then that echo chamber of you locking yourself in a room is only going to get worse and worse. And I think that it takes, it it could easily get to the pinnacle of worst case scenario, but it can show you how all it takes is one person to completely change your life or a group of people in this matter. And granted the action that was taken in this episode was very grand in a, in a, scenario of trying to compare it to real life but i i don't think it would need to be speaking from personal experience too if one person says something nice to you 
and you're at the lowest of the low, even if it wasn't an incredibly significant moment, it could be 10 steps forward in mental progress and just anything can help at that point. I also think it would only reach you if you were open to it. You're right. Uh, like, I think there was imagery. I could be completely wrong. But at first, when you see the lock on Ishigami's door, it's really tight. It is. And then before the president even shows up, it's already loosened. It seems like it's already kind of just dangling there. Like someone could open if if they wanted to. It's like he was saying, basically, if someone wants to stick their neck out for me and come to me, then I would be open to receiving them. You're but right. I am not going to stick my neck out again. I'm not going to open that door. I think that that's an awesome point because it's almost um, potential for an even worse outcome by even leaving that door less locked and having the ability for somebody to come in. Because if, if somebody comes in and then doesn't help you, it could even isolate you further. So there was definitely internal work from Ishigami that of, of, of desire of mm -hmm. wanting to get better. It wasn't him just it what he didn't give up. He I, didn't give up on people. He didn't. And I, he might've given up on his sense of justice and putting himself out there, but he didn't give up on interpersonal relationships and interacting with people. Um, I mean, I've said before that I'm the type of person where people need to, if they want to be friends with me, then they need to make it very, very clear. And they need to be the type of person that's kind of demanding of the friendship and attention because otherwise I will not read it and I will be too scared to try. You know, like I am I'm terrified of friendship and putting myself out there. And I think I would love a Miyuki. <laughs> I was really nervous that it was Miyuki. I was like, I was really like, um, how is this going to help Ishigami in the long run and not just be like a friend reminding him he's got this? But, like, the unveiling of it being... We didn't even know that he knew. No. I, at this whole time, I was like, why does why is Miyuki kind of reacting to Ishigami in this way? How is he noticing that Ishigami's upset right now? Yeah. And it just makes... Miyuki probably saw the girl. If, mm. they, if they researched, he probably knew what she looked like. He probably saw her they in the crowd that together. day. Right? I'm sure he knew as soon as the at the beginning of the day that she was there. I, um, I, I, but I was very scared that it wasn't going to be as enriching because it was Miyuki, and I was I was so wrong, and I'm so happy because that it was him. And you you said it right after the episode. They didn't even like know Ishigami well. They just did it like they hadn't. He'd been home this whole time. Yeah. They hadn't even ever met him. I mean, especially Miyuki, because Miyuki started in high school at the school. And the fact that they put together this secret report together, like... The lack of uh, eyes and faces. I mean, eyes are arguably one of the... At first I was like, is this a budget issue? <laughs> Uh, like, uh, eyes are, like, the way into the soul, no? Like, that that's the cliche. It's a way to, like, um, bring, uh, what's the word? Humanize. It's a way yeah. to humanize someone, and if you're afraid of humanizing people, then imagine, imagining them without eyes is perfect. So, like, them bringing that back at the end was absolutely fantastic. Um, I, I don't know, like, this this is uh as far as like episodes within the series it's no it, it it will come to no surprise to anyone that i love yushigami and i have um this is like well in my top 3 episodes of like the series uh, just, like just i thought that the emotions were um 
so perfect. And I never, you know, I forget. I, I haven't watched a whole lot of anime. I, I am used to watching anime that's written for a teen audience, I guess. I forget that such serious issues are brought up in a lot of different animes. And when they do, like, bring it up and choose to. And, like, like think about the weight of this. This wasn't, like, a... This was a huge situation. Mm -hmm. Like, for t taping her without her knowledge and then using that as leverage to, like... It, it's such a insanely serious situation it's, it's very real too yeah the idea of revenge porn mm -hmm. like that is a very real issue that a lot of girls whether they knew it was saved or recorded or anything or did it or and men happens mm -hmm. happens to everyone it's a real issue this is a real current yeah issue that holds a lot of weight over people's heads and can be used for really nefarious reasons to ruin someone's life and Reputation. only the lowest of the low type of people save or have things that intimate of other people without their consent the lowest of the low it's so like it's not brought up enough i don't think in media that this happens um, and it's no fault of the person. Uh, there was no shaming here, whether was, she knew about this or not. She didn't, I, as far as I know. But yes, agreed. But there was no shaming of it. Like, obviously, if he had something of her that was revealing, there there was no shaming of the fact that she did anything with him, even if she thought it was private and yeah. consensual, you know? Like, there was no shame of like, well, she should have been smarter with the type of guy that she decided to give herself to yeah. or be vulnerable with. You know, there was no shame of that. Like, all that was mentioned was an innocent girl, a sweet girl, believing that this guy truly was a good guy. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't. And that's the focus, is right. that this guy wasn't who everyone thought he was. Which is, I, I think, great. I, you're, you're, you're showing how messed up of a person you have to be to do this. Like, he threatened to take it out on her. Like, he, like, he, it, like, it's, uh, it, it, was, it, it hit, it caught me so off guard. And it's such a real, like, issue. Uh, it's so I don't know uh, words can't do and it. And they justice. handled it respectfully. I they think did. like yes, obviously she. We can be mad at her all we want for the fact that she's mad that uh, they broke up, but this was she was protected. She was saved. She's not a horrible person. All she knows is this guy beat up her boyfriend who she thinks is a sweetheart and then he broke up with her a few days later. That's all she knows. So to her, yeah, Aishigami probably is a, a villain of some sorts. I mean, in a way, I'm like, I kind of wish some she would have realized the truth herself because she came back to the school and hopes to see him again to get back together with him. Mm -hmm. And that's worrisome that like, I feel bad that this girl still believes that this guy is a good guy because what if, you know, he was still there and she got back in a relationship with him, she wouldn't be safe. But that brings up something Hayasaka and Kaguya were saying at the very end, mm -hmm. which why is he not there? Seems like Kaguya might have had something to do with the fact that he's not there anymore at the school. Maybe. Maybe. But I wouldn't I be surprised if Kaguya had something to do with it. I like I. You, I'm thinking back to Miko's interaction with the president last episode. Like she was obvious, inter, obviously integral in a part of it before she was even on the student council. Uh, like it's just good people. 
So, so what was the, co- so can we go back to the, what Miko had said to that teacher? Last uh, episode? Yeah. Cause now we know the truth of Ishigami's situation and the fact that he had to write this apology. I think it was in regards to him graduating. So was it because, uh, was she arguing that don't hold him back from graduating just because he hasn't written this apology? I think so. Oh, they're going overboard with the whole, if you don't write this apology, you won't yeah. graduate. Okay. So she was upset. She thought it was silly to keep him from graduating. Uh, that they were going overboard in this righteous mission to get him to, this punishment to get him to write an apology. Correct. That's awesome. Because I think that that's a legitimate point. Because it wasn't like Ishigami was shutting it out completely. He said that what he did was wrong, but he didn't want to apologize. He said he regretted it too. Yeah. Which is interesting that Miko would, if Miko didn't know the truth, she would never stand for physical violence, right? If she didn't know that there was a righteous reason you were doing it. So it, it's really curious how she would argue for him not to be punished anymore. I guess in her in her mind, she has her own view of how much punishment is enough for each crime or uh, for, issue. For arguing a hypothetical that I don't know. He did the time. He, he, he served his initial sentence. He did all the work that was like required of him. It would be stupid to keep uh, to not let him graduate based off of this one little, uh, you know, point. A, a very petty thing. Yeah. Writing someone an apology letter, like, is it- no, not even writing someone an apology letter. Ha- saying the words "I'm sorry." Right? It's not like he wasn't willing to write an apology letter. It's just he didn't want to apologize. It, it, like he was saying that he was like he shouldn't have did it. And she maybe she had a feeling that if he wasn't willing to apologize, that there must, there must have been she something. might have come to the same conclusion the, that the, the student, student council, council did. did that there had to be a reason why yeah. he wasn't telling the truth. Which is awesome. I. Uh, I mean, with that imagination of hers, she could have come up with like 5,000 interesting <laughs> reasons why, you know? I wish I could see them all. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- this is like a, this is going to be one of w- one of those episodes in anime that I'm going to sit with for a while and like really like have to like, like, there's nothing negative, I feel, coming out of this episode, but to gauge of how amazing, positive, oh my god, screaming, like, on my list of, like, moments in any show, or any episodes in any show, it's gonna take a bit. Because it's, like... It got me to feel and think about something I haven't thought about in years. And then say it on <laughs> camera, which, like, I don't know if I regret or not, because I'm embarrassed. No, I don't uh, think there's any reason to be. <laughs> About it, I think. I, embarrassed isn't like I know that's not a good word to use for it and that's not how I should feel no yeah but like I feel very vulnerable at the moment I understand I I you saying it if anything helped me in regards to how I think about my time in high school I didn't lo- like I high school was a bad experience for me and knowing that uh I don't know. It makes me feel like less alone in my experience that uh, like high school sucked, man. <laughs> yeah. We should just cancel high school. Like um, everyone should just skip high school. Well, like I, you're like, I don't know. You're I, my favorite character in the show is Ichi, Ishigami and you related to one of his core moments. And my favorite character in real life is you. So <laughs> I like it's it's uh it makes sense. I just like selfless. That, <laughs> I like that there's a character in this show that we can emotionally attach to uh and not just enjoy the dynamics and the entertaining value of a romantic comedy but that we can feel stuff. Obviously we feel stuff with all of the characters, but you know, sometimes it, it hits a little too close to home. Yeah. You know? I mean, I like, 
to a very less degree, I sometimes feel relations to Kaguya over not at all the same specific situations, but like the general theme that they're running with, with several of her familial moments, I can easily connect with. And it, I think they do that with every character in the show uh, for the most part. And I like it better show for it. It's awesome. It's cool for a piece of media to make you feel the emotions that we're feeling. Yeah. I actually, like, before we started this channel, uh, I'm afraid of feeling, of emotions being brought on or memories being triggered by shows and, and media. So for a while, I had actually, for years, actually, I stopped reading books and I stopped consuming media that wasn't cooking shows and reality TV that wasn't dramatic. Like I, for the longest time, have avoided anything that could possibly create emotions in me, uh, which is unhealthy, I think. Um, And this channel has like uh, forced me, I guess, to start feeling or having things that aren't actually real and are created and are art affect me again. Uh, Which is so interesting because I literally went to college for art and art was always something and, and English. I went for English as well. And both of those things always, you know, there's so much emotion and there's so much that it can bring upon and, and remind you of. And the fact that I have like closed myself off to all of those things that I have loved since I was a child in order to to not feel anything that I didn't decide I wanted to feel or think about in that moment. Uh, it's almost like this is therapeutic to me, like when you have to desensitize yourself to something like I then can attest to this. If we're watching something now, it, maybe even a year ago, it was worse that if something dramatic happened on the TV, I run out of the room. Yeah. I uh, run out of the room. I can't handle it because I I get really attached to the characters. I feel myself in their shoes. I, a lot of people who read will say that they read themselves as the main character in, in the story a lot of the time, or they put themselves in that position. And I get really into it and really immersed and really emotionally attached and I, really scared in I, the process. I feel a little guilty um, and uh, apologetic for because but, but while we were uh, dating well before the channel, uh, before we lived together, I had grown this like addiction to immersion through media. Like I would sit on my bed with like my TV or monitor like there, but that wasn't enough. Like whether it was scary, sad, anything that was like targeted to emotions, I would like turn off my lights, get an extremely long auxiliary cable to wear headphones in bed to watch whatever I'm watching. Not because I couldn't hear it, but that's why I had us wear headphones on the channel. Now it's, it's probably not for everyone, but for me, having headphones on and like kind of shutting off that world and forcing you to sit here and look at like media and be as immersed as possible, like I think makes that media stand out a little mm-hmm. bit more. And uh, so ap- apologies. <laughs> it's definitely like if you were um, scared of spiders or something and uh, part of your therapy was that you had to like do different things to desensitize yourself to your fear of spiders uh touching spiders looking at a spider i don't know that's how i feel about um shows with any narrative at all or any drama at all is that uh that's why like before the channel i only watched anime that was like slice of life or romance um just very soft um soft things that i wouldn't need to feel anything or food network or food network yes yeah uh but this is that's i do think that the channel has been very therapeutic for me because i feel like i'm 
forcing myself to uh, be open to feeling things again and not having to be, I think it might've been a control issue. Like I needed to feel like I was in control of when I thought about things, when memories were triggered, when I had emotions. Uh, Another thing that I did before a year ago when this started is I would have to read descriptions of movies or shows before I watched them and possibly even like look up the exact plot of everything that happened. So I knew whether I was going to want to watch it or not. It's so... I obviously am only speaking for myself, but I know that you had known about Death Note for years, but intentionally went and nowhere. And Attack on Titan. Yeah, but intentionally went nowhere near it. We finished Death Note. It, it's same with Train to Busan for me. That's extremely outside of my comfort zone. I, just I went into zombies. it knowing nothing, but both of those experiences, knowing nothing and f- and being even pushed out of my comfort zone with Train to Busan. I look favorably back at those things. And I think that knowing nothing and going in full immersion made me enjoy that product more. Like, why would I choose to watch a show before, before now where someone had a book and they could write and kill people in it or giant monsters that look like horribly deformed, big, bulbous belly humans naked babies running around eating people when they don't even need to eat people they're just doing it because they want to you know and now i think for me it's like to say so i can like feel these things so i can experience or enjoy someone's creative invention like i have been denying myself someone's art and hey, that's for the channel's okay. sake, it's kind of good. <laughs> I guess for the for channel's sake, us, it is good avoiding that I this stuff. refused to watch anything that wasn't really soft, sweet, and innocent, and mm-hmm. nothing uh, that would make me feel anything. I was like, genres? Nope. If there's action? Nope. If there's <laughs> death? Nope. Death? Nope. Oh. <laughs> I need I need beach episodes, school festivals. Uh, oh, Haikyuu was okay. I watched it. <laughs> yeah. I need some Valentine's Day cookies to be made, white day, you know, and oh, maybe you're scared to give it to your crush and then you don't end up giving it to them. You know, I need, I need yeah. that was all I could handle. I really enjoyed this show. I'm excited to read the manga after we finish it as well. Um, I just want to see what the panels look like. I want to see too. what the actual art looks like. It's not. I loved Hori Mia. I I have I adored Hori Mia, but it, this is not like a as ro- romance like it, like focused, and I love it for that. Um, I don't. Know. I actually, if we were like um, cataloging. Uh, romances. Mal. <laughs> yeah, Mal or something. Uh, my anime list. Uh, I would definitely put this higher than Horimiya. And I am not exactly sure why, but like, I really did enjoy Horimiya, but it never, um, it didn't stack up to things that I had watched, um, previous that had romance and had love. You know, the Dawn, Snow with the Red Hair, Fruits Basket. Uh, to name a few. See, I've seen no none of them. I've, I know. I, I've seen two romance ish anime, Hori Mia, and then part of Kaguya Sama Love Is War, and, and it, they're like my two favorite shows it, ever. Didn't like, we pick? Um, I don't remember why we picked Hori Mia for the channel. Was it because it was new at the time? I don't. Or was think it requested? So. I know Kaguya Sama Love Is War was um Four. something people wanted. Yeah. Us to experience. Hori Mia, we just um, did. I have my own list though of things I want Ben to experience and obviously eventually we will get to that. They're like how how could he not watch Fruits Basket? You know? How could he not? He's seen a no. You what, Fruits Baskets? I was going to say Kimi Nini Todoke. Oh no, I haven't. That's uh, another good I, I believe I've seen the first episode of the original Fruits Baskets, but that's it. 
I don't, that's another question. If we do watch Fruits Basket, if there are any Fruits Basket fans out there, I have been trying to decide, you know, like there's the older version that like I grew up watching and I've watched many, many times and I adored. And it's literally the first manga I ever bought was Fruits Basket because that was one of the first romance anime that I loved and saw. And there's the newer one. And I think that there is merit to watching both because it's, if you if you know the series and you know the show, they're different. There's an, a, a different kind of mood uh, that has been created for both of those series intentionally. And I think there's merit in watching both of them. Is, is for a new viewer's experience, would you choose to have them watch the older one and then watch the newer one or just experience the newer one. I don't know. I'm not really sure. I also am not super like I had never watched reaction videos before this like you had. So I don't know what would make possibly a better reaction or a better experience for you, a better viewing experience. I don't know because obviously I watched the earlier one and then the later one and I turned out fine, you know? Yeah. Just a little traumatized, but I turned out fine. <laughs> this is by far, like, I think the longest discussion we've had for anything besides Attack on Titan. It's or probably because I got, I got emotional. Well, I, it was, it's a compelling story and it's some, something that I think deserves to talk about. Um, but yeah, I, if anyone's still here, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know we went a little, like, actually a lot off topic. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was all inspired by Kaguya-sama Loves War and especially this episode. I apologize if it was a little too off the rails uh, for Auto you. save off the rails. <laughs> um, okay, but this was candid camp conversation. And Do you guys like auto save off the rails? If you do, please comment down below and we'll reach out to H3 and see if we can use off the rails too. I don't know. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we hope to see you next time.